In this video, we're going to talk about different types of dose calculation algorithms. So we can classify dose calculation algorithms into three different categories, which we'll call types A, B, and C. So type A algorithms are models that do not consider changes in electron transport. Type B are models that in an approximate way consider changes in electron transport. And type C are models that in which the physics generating the dose absorption process is rigorously accounted for. And we'll get into a, a little more detail about each of these. So let's start with type A algorithms. So these are those in that apply a series of correction factors to convert dose from a known scenario, which is typically the calibration condition, but, but not always, uh, to a new scenario. And this is what we would do with a hand calculation, and which fits into this category. Um, these algorithms, uh, it's important to note that they assume that charged particle equilibrium or transient charged particle equilibrium uh, is present. Um, so that's just kind of an inherent assumption. And to get into a little more detail visually about what this looks like, let's say we start with the condition here on the left where we have a reference SSD, a reference depth, a reference uh, field size, and at that particular location, we know that we have uh, one centigrade per modern unit. We know what the dose is because we've calibrated the machine to give that. It's measured. And then we have to, we want to calculate dose to a new condition. Maybe it has a new source to surface distance. Maybe it has a new depth. Uh, maybe it has a new field size, uh, so on and so forth. And so we want to convert dose from the, from the situation on the left, where we know what the dose is, to this new situation on the right. And we can use a series of empirically measured correction factors, whether that's a, a scatter factor or a uh, inverse square correction for distance from the isocenter or um, a percent depth dose curve or a tissue maximum ratio curve or, um, or a wedge factor. If we've got a wedge or a tray in the, in the, in the, that's placed in the beam, we, we have these empirically measured correction factors that we can use to convert the dose from the situation on the left to the situation on the right. Type B algorithms are models that in an approximate way consider changes in electron transport. So some algorithms that fit into this group are pencil beam calculation algorithms, which uh, ones that incorporate approximate corrections for lateral uh, electron transport. Uh, one example would be the anisotropic analytical algorithm. Um, also collapsed cone convolution and multigrid superposition. And just a little more detail about how these algorithms work. So type B algorithms, the dose deposition is typically modeled using a convolution superposition technique. So you can see in this figure here on the left, uh, we have the terma, and then we have a, a dose convolution kernel. And so you convolve that terma with, the, with that dose kernel and you end up with dose. And this process can be carried out uh, separately for each of the individual components. So for instance, uh, there may be a dose kernel for the primary photon beam that's coming in uh, from the photons that are scattered, for, like kind of a scattered, uh, head scattered photons, and then the electron contamination. And each of those may have their own uh, kernel and uh, dose convolution that occurs, and then you would add up uh, the com combination of those three components to get your final dose. So for a dose convolution superposition algorithm, what exactly is the dose kernel? Well, the dose kernel represents uh, the energy spread resulting from uh, interactions at a given point or line. So, so you can have a kernel for either a line or a point, uh, so on and so forth. And the energy spreads because uh, charged particles and scattered photons carry energy away from the site of that primary interaction. Um, these kernels are typically pre-calculated based on uh, complex Monte Carlo simulations. So, um, you know, here's an example in this figure of uh, Monte Carlo simulation um, dose kernel, like Monte Carlo, sorry, Monte, Car Monte Carlo derived dose kernels. And so these would be pre calculated with Monte Carlo, but that doesn't mean that the algorithm itself is a Monte Carlo algorithm. Um, just the kernel itself is derived using that. 
So let's talk about type C algorithms. So we've defined these as algorithms in which the physics generating the dose absorption process is rigorously accounted for. And really there's two such algorithms. One is Monte Carlo simulation, in which the individual particle tracks are modeled. And the other, which is a little newer on the scene, is linear Boltzmann transform equation solvers. And this is, you could say this is an analytical equivalent to Monte Carlo. And we'll get into a little more detail on each of these. So Monte Carlo simulation is kind of known to be the gold standard for dose calculation. And this is basically when you have each particle track being modeled throughout the medium, right? So you'll have, uh, you know, individual photons or electrons that come in and you're modeling all of the events and you're adding up dose and there's more multiple histories. And um, as you add more histories, you increase your statistics and you get better statistics for that dose. Um, there is, uh, it, you know, it requires accurate modeling of the linear accelerator head, the patient anatomy. Um, it inherently accounts for situations where uh, transient charge particle equilibrium does not apply. So that's a, a big advantage, one reason why it's the gold standard. Um, it often uses a cutoff cut energy below which events are not simulated. And yeah, more simulated events e equals better statistics. So linear Boltzmann transfer equation solvers, uh, these are kind of newer on the scene. They're also called grid-based Boltzmann solvers. Basically, um, the numerically solves the coupled Boltzmann linear radiation transport equations using interaction cross-sections for relevant materials. So this is kind of an analytical equivalent to Monte Carlo, like a numerical solver equivalent to Monte Carlo. Uh, so for Monte Carlo, we get better statistics when we have more events. Here, with with these algorithms, um, we get better uh, statistics, more better accuracy with smaller a smaller calculation grid when you're dividing those uh, voxels into smaller and smaller uh, pieces. The, uh, an example of this that you'll see um, clinically is called Acuros. So that's kind of a, a very common, Acuros is a very common uh, linear Boltzmann transfer equation solver that's actually used clinically. All right, thank you.